Good afternoon, everybody. It's a truly a pleasure to be on Treaty 7 uh, Traditional Territories and to be um, part of this spectacular view outside. Isn't that amazing? Wow. I'm just, I was saying to somebody earlier, I wish I came from here. This is such a nice, and it would, to be able to have that vista, be part of that, that must be um, very, very special to, to see that on a regular basis. It's certainly nice for us from High Prairie School Division. And just so you know, High Prairie School Division is north. Edmonton is south for us, just to get your bearings in. Where, where is it located? It's along um, from the boreal forest of Slave Lake, uh, Lesser Slave Lake, along the lake shore, up through the, um, the Peace Country. And so that's where we, we're from. We're um, smaller, but uh, very, very uh, culturally rich area with lots of diversity, which in itself is great and challenging. And, um, but I would like to uh, just, just start by saying that I'm not going to spend much time. We're going to devote our presentation specifically to one school. And um, we have a lot of terrific things happening. But before I go any further, I just want to say that it was thanks to uh, Solange. And she was using uh, self-deprecation a little while ago, saying how she wasn't really important or something like that. But actually, for us, she was very important. So. Solange came to um, High Prairie School Division and spoke to our administrators and sprinkled some ideas, spread some sparks around. Some of those sparks um, didn't gather any fire, but some did. And um, she worked directly with our schools, a couple of our schools for sure. And one of the schools that she worked with, um, she worked with directly with the principal of the, of, the, of the day at that school, and his name was Mr. Murray Moran. And Murray is now our uh, Assistant Superintendent of Finance, but we've asked Murray if he can come up and uh, tell the story. Here's Murray. Thanks, Evan. Uh, and like Evan, I won't take much, uh, much of your time either because um, uh, my life is now spreadsheets and numbers, so I don't know how to talk in front of people anymore. So. <laughs> Just briefly, this is our team that's here today. I'd like to acknowledge the table over there. There are a bunch of uh, administrators and HPSD staff there, and they were happy that they could come with us. They're all part of this project that uh, we've been working on in trying to close, ultimately, the FNMI achievement gap. So moving on to George P. Vanier. When I was principal of George P. Vanier and we had our initial presentation from Solange, I knew that we had to approach uh, our FNMI learners with a sense of urgency. And I started that process as principal of a school with little or no knowledge. <laughs> okay, I moved from Calgary to High Prairie. That should give you a context right there. And uh, so when, and I knew that we had to do this and we had to do it quickly. Um, part of my leadership style is, is I, I quite like the Nike slogan, just do it. So when I was working with Chantal and Judith, who will be coming up and who, who did the real work, um, all I could say was, let's just do it. Um, luckily, we had uh, Solange as a resource, and then luckily again, Solange came into our school and worked directly with our teachers and our educational assistants. And I think that that was the turning point um, for the culture of our school. And because it wasn't really on anybody's radar, the FNMI achievement gap. It was on administration's radar, but I don't think it was on um, teachers or EA's radar. In fact, the school, GPV, is um, located in a, in a Francophone community. And so you would hear people say, well, we don't have any FNMI learners. But if you looked at the data, what you would see is that for Francophone learners, we had almost an equal number of FNMI learners and they were not getting the attention that they, that they rightly so needed. Um, so for me, as principal, I had three goals in, looking, in working with Solange. One was community engagement. Second was post-secondary transition. How can we get every kid to school? And then the third was building cultural understanding. So like I said, with Solange's help, we flew by the seat of our pants, and uh, this is where we're at today, and this is the story of GPV. So I'd like to invite Chantelle up, please. Good 
Hello, my name is Chantal Nicolette. I'm French, obviously, and I'm a visual arts teacher at GP Vanier School. Our Aboriginal students are town Cree and live off reserve. Many have never been to a powwow. They know Kukum and Tanse, but they have lost their language. And with it, many have lost their spirituality and true identity. They are asked to walk in two worlds, many of them lost in both. Near to us, St. Bernard Residential School in Gruard only closed its doors in 1961 after taking hundreds of children away from their families and communities year after year. As a school division, it is estimated that 65% of our Aboriginal youth are grandchildren of those who have survived residential schools. Please allow me to share with you a little bit of my own background and you'll see where I'm going with this. I was born and raised in this community, in this school. My French parents and grandparents are from here, my aunts, uncles, and cousins. My school years were a time of joyful learning and growth. I was raised to be an active and responsible community member. After graduating from high school, I truly thought I knew everything there was to know about my community, where I come from, and where I'm going. After graduating from the University of Alberta, I truly thought, again, that I knew everything there was to know about education. I'm getting somewhere with this. After working and traveling with students and teachers in many countries, as, such as Switzerland, Vietnam, Australia, and Brazil, I really thought I knew everything about teaching children of all ages and of many cultural backgrounds. When I decided to return to my hometown with my Calgarian husband and two children, I found myself teaching First Nation students for the first time. And for the first time, I realized that I know very little about what it means to be a successful teacher here in Alberta and in Canada for that matter. I soon realized how little I know about Aboriginal culture and history, how little I know about my own community, my own neighbors. Sure, we had textbooks with chapters, colonization, confederation, but I had never heard of Treaty 8. I had never heard of Treaty 8. I had never heard of residential schools in my backyard. I had never experienced the beauty and power of a powwow. How little do I know about my home and late native land? How many teachers are just like me? I guess that's why we're here today, to do better, to provide a better education and a brighter future for our sons and daughters, for all young Canadians. I believe teachers hold a special key, a key to the mind and hearts of our children. I know this key comes with a great responsibility. For that reason, I know I will never know everything and I will never stop learning. Allow me to share with you a poem uh, that was shared with me by one of my students at lunchtime. Uh, his name is Gavin Anderson and he asked if he could share a poem he wrote before coming to our school and that's where this picture comes from. White Walls by Gavin Anderson. White walls encase my mind. Here I am not free. Imagination is contained. Ordinary I shall be. I can't dream in this place. I put up a fight, try to be tough. Checkered floors are not enough. With imagination, how tall could I grow and grow and grow? The ceiling has become so low. The more I struggle, the tighter the squeeze. At my desk, I feel less and less at ease. I tremble and freeze, I do not speak. No story to tell, no picture to call my own. Where love is torn and sliced to bits, imagination does not exist. Why should I care? White walls are everywhere. I don't want a single child to feel that way about school. I feel very grateful to be able to teach art. I get to play with kids all day long. Teaching art is a wonderful way to celebrate local culture and to ignite a spirit of pride and belonging. In the past few years, our students have created cultural art to embellish the walls of our school and of our communities. Here are some examples of our four feet by four feet art boards uh, that are being circulated throughout our school and throughout our community. 
Over 100 framed works of art shine not only in our school, but in our senior citizens' residence, medical clinics, restaurants, and sports facilities. Artwork is labeled in French, English, and Cree. In our community, all students can say, this is my school, this is my town. I care about this place, and I painted that. Parents, grandparents can brag about their children's artistic abilities as they, as they discuss the weather, the crops, and the new baby in the family. In addition to building connections and relationships through the arts, we knew we needed to start focusing on our Aboriginal students and the way they see themselves. How can we integrate Aboriginal perspectives when our students can barely identify themselves as FNMI students, First Nation, Métis, and Inuit? We decided that what we needed for our school was an Aboriginal culture club. We have since created this club with the idea to provide an opportunity for FNMI students to get together, have fun, learn, and replace a feeling of shame with a feeling of pride, confidence, and belonging when it comes to being an Aboriginal student at GT Zanya School. When we started our club last school year, many students were shy, hesitant, and even embarrassed when it came to talking about being Aboriginal. I remember walking around the school asking kids, Tristan, would you like to join our Aboriginal Culture Club? Who, me? Yeah, you, Tristan. He looked around to see if anybody heard me say that. Are you an FNMI student? I don't know. Are you an FBI teacher? <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't get it, Tristan. French, British, Irish. I don't call you FBI. I don't really like being called FNMI. I'm Cree, Taylor's Métis, Kathleen's Inuit, not FNMI. Good point. Anyway, are you joining us this afternoon? We're gonna have an Aboriginal Culture Club activity. We're gonna sing and drum and circle dance. Who could resist? Okay, I'll check it out. But by the way, it's called a round dance. I'm coming from learning a square dance and a lion dance in gym class. Like I said, I have a lot to learn. I remember having a conversation with a new grade seven student. Michelle, why didn't you make flutes with us this afternoon? Oh, I didn't know I could join in. Well, are you Aboriginal? I don't know. Is your last name Labukan? Yes. Are you First Nation, Métis, or Inuit? I don't know, but I can ask my cook them. Guess what? You're in. This year, rather than recruiting students we knew were First Nations, we had students popping in asking to join claiming to be Métis publicly for the first time in their lives. Are you sure you're Métis, Owen? Oh yes, ask my mom, call her. Okay. Hi, Mrs. Gannett, I'm calling about your son, Owen. Oh, yes. What happened? What do you do? Oh, I, I was just wondering, uh, we're having an Aboriginal Culture Club activity and Owen would love to join us as a Métis student. Owen is sharing his excitement although we don't have this on our school records. Is this right? Yes, it is, replied his mother. I am Métis. My apologies, I did not check off the status box in registering my son. Mrs. Gannett, may I ask you why not? I didn't want to disadvantage my child. This statement spoke for itself. Children are now approaching their parents and asking them about their own cultural history. A feeling of doubt and hesitation by our Aboriginal students has been replaced by excitement, joy, and pride. When a new student, Terry, joined us this year, his mother approached me and said, I was worried about my son fitting in here. This was a big move for him, but when I found out about your Aboriginal Culture Club, I knew he was going to be happy here, and I said, thank you for making my day. With our Aboriginal Culture Club, we have shared many experiences, most of them new to me, and many of them new to our kids as well. We have invited community leaders such as Devin Belrose here with us today to host student workshops including drumming, storytelling, artwork, and hand games. We have invited David Rattree to lead a traditional flute making workshop. We have invited Alphonsus Cook and Beatrice Sutherland to host an Aboriginal craftsmanship day. We have taken our kids to powwows, round dances, and feasts. Here are a few pictures of the first powwow I had ever been to. We've, 
taken our students to a feature film at the High Prairie Movie Theater. We had 175 students viewing the film. The great surprise was the award-winning actress Roseanne Superno from the High Prairie flew into town to meet with students at the end of the film. She's a wonderful role model for our kids. One of my favorite lines by our star actress was the following. I don't drink, I don't do drugs, and I'm fun. I have lots of celebrity friends, I go to nightclubs, and everyone knows I'm the sober fun one. She told them of all the opportunities students have because they are Aboriginal youth in Canada. Take your phone, kids. Google it. Opportunities for Aboriginal youth in Canada. And so they did. We have also hosted an annual family night for our students and their families. The amount of guests attending Family Night doubled within the second year of our club. Family Night is the best opportunity for us to meet and gather with children and parents, staff included. Building relationships of trust and respect have opened the lines of communication between school personnel, students, and families. Back to our young poet, Gavin. He has recently writ written a new poem. Allow me to share it with you. Gavin is the one with the bigger hair. One has the great long hair, one has the big hair. Under the Lilac Tree by Gavin Anderson. They carry the mahogany chair and the cane rocker out to sit under the lilac tree. In the wicker pram, there's a baby. That baby is me. Our clapboard house sits on the hill, gazing at the sunset still. This was our world. I can see each shaft of grass on my fingers, feeling its rasp. I can draw the map of every lilac leaf and the net of veins on my father's grief-ridden hands, under the lilac tree, remembering and remembered. Our group of Aboriginal students, I know I'm, 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 I'm short on time, I'm, I'm getting there. Three minutes, okay. Our group of Aboriginal students has greatly evolved within the first two years of our culture club. They have become much more confident and knowledgeable when talking about where they come from and what that means to them. We have since begun sharing more cultural activities and celebrations with our entire student body. All of our junior high students, for example, have recently participated in a drumming workshop led by Devin Belrose. All students from 7 to 12 have enjoyed the fabulous storytelling and flute playing of David Bouchard. I was going to share a poem, but I'll skip it because I don't have time. As an art teacher, I have a tendency to focus on colors, although I do understand the power of numbers. Allow me to share with you a few numbers which might be of interest to you. Since we first started focusing on our Aboriginal students, FNMI dropout rates have fallen from 12.3 to 5.7 percent. Attendance has risen from 68 to 82 percent. What do these numbers mean for teachers? 30 more days of kids attending school. 30 more days of Tristan present in his daily math class can definitely be the difference between failing and passing that class. Although we've come a long way in the past few years, we know this is only the tip of the iceberg. There's always much more to learn and much more we can do. This leads us to the next chapter in our journey. Judith Coulter, my coworker and friend at GP Vanney School, is here to share with you some of our most recent undertakings in helping our students transition from high school into a happy and successful adult life. Thank you very much. Hi there. Our project, as you can see, takes the bottom up approach instead of the top down. And our Aboriginal students are learning to do and learning to be. And our efforts are helping our school community with learning to relate and learning to know. As our Aboriginal students do and be and grow in confidence, our staff and school community have more awareness of Aboriginal students, their culture, and cultural diversity in our school. In addition to bringing cultural activities into the school and integrating FNMI perspectives into the classroom, we felt that it was important uh, for students to explore opportunities available to them in the wider world. We want to develop leadership skills in our Aboriginal students and get them thinking about their future goals. Our first trip was to Edmonton to the Dreamcatchers Conference 
at Grant McEwen University, and we also went to the Nate Open House and Marvell College. Uh, for many, it was the first time out of the community, staying in a big hotel and visiting the West Edmonton Mall. Dreamcatchers was exciting and scary with interesting sessions and activities, but if you would ask our students what they uh, enjoyed the most about the opportunity, it was to speak with an elder. One of our major challenges is that we have been unable to find an elder within our community. Our uh, trip to the Nate Open House connected our Foods and IA courses with employment opportunities in the trades, and uh, Mar Marvell College ties in with our cosmetology courses. Our second trip uh, was to Peace River, and uh, Peace River High School hosted an Aboriginal career fair. Uh, the information was presented from an Aboriginal perspective, and it's really uh, exciting to see a lot of the colleges and universities um, having their Aboriginal uh, centers that help them transition from the smaller communities out into the bigger world. And um, the ties, it's interesting also the ties in with the dual credit programs that our students are already uh, pursuing at our school. Uh, also, uh, we have a philosophy at our school amongst the staff and the grad coach that uh, we don't want anybody to close any doors, uh, doors on opportunities uh, by taking easy courses. So we uh, encourage students to be, um, you know, taking the challenge and looking at their future and be it in the trades um, or attending uh, a higher post-secondary education um, college or university, we want them to strive to be the best that they can be. Um, when we went to the Peace High uh, Aboriginal Career Fair, there was an individual there from the University of Calgary that presented two condensed units from the Native Ambassador Post-Secondary Initiative Personal Leadership Program and all of our students really enjoyed that. Our third trip was to uh, Spirit Seekers Conference at Grand Prairie Regional College, and uh, just uh, in addition to the amazing sessions that they had there and the feast and the uh, student awards that they had and the round dance, um, it was just the capper for me when a, an Aboriginal student told me this. I'm going to be here next year, and I'm going to join the circle of Aboriginal students and help plan next year's conference, because this was absolutely amazing. Uh, another of our uh, colleagues couldn't be here today, Leona Lebrecht, and so I'm going to uh, briefly tell you that Leona helps our Aboriginal students find their roots. She works closely with a liaison worker from our local hospital, and with our students and their families to help fill out their paperwork for their Métis and Treaty cards. Leona's work is extremely important because many of our Aboriginal students don't know much about their family history or which nations or settlements they belong to. Métis and Treaty cards allow our Aboriginal students to access things like dental care, post-secondary secondary opportunities, and summer youth programs. And that's all I have to say at uh, this time. I'd like to introduce you to uh, Devin Bellrose, one of our key collaborators. Thank you. Oki, Danitata, Amboistitz, Tanse, Devin Bellrose, Kasika, Son, Tata Gausi, Piotse. I come to you from what's traditionally called Tatagao CP, or the Driftpile River. And it's a great honor to be able to stand here and introduce myself in that way. In 1899, on the shores of the Lesser Slave Lake, in a sacred place called Willow Point, Treaty 8 was established by Chief Canusio and the rest of the headmen. The longest journey that a person makes is from their head to their heart and I want to thank Chantelle today for speaking from her heart and often that's a very challenging thing to do. My musham, the late Eddie Belrose, used to say, first we listen, 
then we learn and then we understand. That's the process for education for us as native people. And I don't think it's too different from the rest of the people in this room, the communities in which you come from, the families, the home fires, which you represent. It's been an absolute honor to be a part of the High Prairie School Division and their initiatives with the Aboriginal kids. I come from a community where 80% of our elders were exposed to residential school, where the intent of that was to remove the Indian from the child. The challenge today is to inspire the individual back into the child. And that's what I've heard here all day. And that's exciting for First Nations people, as that should be exciting for each and every one of you that are participating in that. To be able to inspire what, with what we believe as the beginning of our reconciliation, and that's the children. That's where it begins. It begins with the children to inspire and to say it's okay. The language that you speak, the families that you come from. To be able to honor that and to self-identify that. And with that self-identity, we create an opportunity for growth. And I commend each and every one of you for that. And I want to thank the High Prairie School Division for allowing me to be a part of that growth as well. Hi, hi.